Well, that didn't take long, did it? <laughs> I mean, I, I really was living in hope that this new CEO of Hasbro, Chris Cox, wouldn't live up to his, his surname. But apparently they've decided that they just didn't make enough money this past go around and they missed the mark by something like 15%. So they're gonna cut 60 million in salaries to help make up for that. And they're going to obviously pass on a lot of their next excuses for price increases to us. Even though certain divisions of Hasbro, we know have made record profits. So for example, Marvel Legends, probably helped in large part by their multiple price hikes already, has already made over half a billion dollars in revenue. Marvel Legends has made over half a billion in revenue. But let's hear what Chris Cox has to say. And I quote from the press release. Hasbro has many strengths, amazing brands that span generations, a gaming portfolio second to none, a history of play and entertainment innovation led by some of the best teams in the business, and unwavering corporate citizenship said Chris Cox, Chief Executive Officer Hasbro. Building on these strengths, today we announce a new day for Hasbro with the introduction of Blueprint 2.0. This strategic approach is core to how we'll continue to bring our strong brands to life for consumers of all ages, and how we'll manage the business to monetize our intellectual property, drive investments, deliver profitable growth, and create shareholder value. The biggest toy company in the world. Supposed to have some of the most creative artists, sculptors, storytellers, you name it. And the name of their business plan is Blueprint 2.0 because Chris Cox and most of the people like him don't have a creative bone in their body. They are an army of insidious MBA holding slack jawed doofuses that run industry in this country and around most of the, you know, industrialized world. And um, yeah, so they write like that because I'm pretty convinced at this point, all of them are wearing skin suits. And I would really appreciate it at this point, since this company is no longer even trying to hide uh, its outright theft of the consumer, that you guys would just take the skin suits off and show us your lizard faces for once. Like, just do it. Like, because that is not, that is not the writing of a human being. That is the writing of a corporate automaton and or an alien trying really hard to sound like a human being and failing miserably. Whatever that was, Mr. Cox, that's not a human approach to anything. I'm going to say something here that uh, I know might sound like it's about to run counter to what I've just said. But as we've seen with the Ghost Rider rollout and on HasLab with that stupid car that people are backing out from and everything... Um, and as we're seeing with some of the rollouts of some of their other announcements, while I think it's obviously horrendous that a company that's making money hand over fist has decided that the best way to keep more of their money is to use that tired NBA playbook and fire a bunch of people. I don't know if it has bro right now, not including the sculptors. I give all deference to the sculptors who are actually making the products. They are exempt from what I'm about to say. But all of these front-facing Hasbro employees, including ones that God knows might be some of the sculptors, I don't know, but the front-facing Hasbro employees uh, who, who do these pulse streams and stuff like that, if they're in the group that gets the ax, I have no pity. Um... You've got the biggest toy company in the world. And their, their social media strategy is stuff like this. Look at it. Somebody at Hasbro said, hey, let, let me get a shot of you for this upcoming Indiana Jones panel. This is going to be great. 
Now, I want to be clear about something. I'm not trying to disparage this individual's looks or anything like that. I don't know who he is, and I'm sure he looks just fine in a normal photograph, all right, to be clear. That, though, at an $11 billion company, nobody on a social media team should be letting a photograph like that out for the launch of a big brand like Indiana Jones. What does that say? Those are the best people you got? That's your A team? Like, the, the person that interviewed Sergeant Slaughter? They were dressed like they rolled out of bed? Really? So on the one hand, corporation's gonna corporate. I mean, they're, they're following the playbook. They're doing the mercenary play. On the other hand, I look at some of those people and go, if you guys don't get gone because of this, then Hasbro really is allowing failures to fail upward because you are the ones that need to go. Botching these HasLabs, creating HasLab in the first place. Don't even get me started on that. I mean, I've been seeing around the, the internet lately, the last few days, some very, very big YouTubers who are known Hasbro butt kissers, like big time Hasbro butt kissers, have finally announced that they're backing out of the Ghost Rider HasLab. And I sit there and I'm like, yeah, you're a little late doing that. And the only reason you hung on as long as you did is because your friends at Hasbro are going to look down on you and you know it for backing out of this thing because you're one of their, you know, biggest influencers, some of you guys. And you're like, this is all about optics at this point for yourself. Suddenly people who are like big wig YouTubers are finally waking up and going, oh, I should have been thinking about my audience before I thought about these companies that I'm friendly with. Wow, it took you that long? Make no mistake, they're not backing out of this thing because they actually want to or actually think it's not worth what they're pushing on everybody else. They're backing out of it because the audience at large, the consumer collector community at large, has finally turned on this garbage. And they're like, oh, I got to get on the right side of this as fast as I can. Because they've never been on the right side of it yet to begin with. I, I, I fear and, and I pray for the sculptors at Hasbro who actually make the products. I have no sympathy for the strategy with which Hasbro is implementing these cuts because it's pure greed at this point, as we have seen with their multiple flimsily excused price, hi price hikes the last 18 months, and especially with these, these recent Haslabs. Even the people who bought the successful Haslabs before the Ghost Rider have admitted, it was like, yeah, these were inflated prices, but I just had to have it. I'll say, I, I said it before and I'll say it again. You taught this company how to treat you by buying into these inflated things. And it affected all of their products across the board. These big influencers who are now backpedaling as fast as they can to save their optics in front of their audience because suddenly they realize, oh, it's not Hasbro that keeps me solvent. It's the viewers that I've amassed. Well, no shit. Well done, genius. God. Hasbro is... is playing the hand that we all knew they would play, and they're playing it to the end game. They care more about Wall Street than they do about you. They care more about Wall Street than they do about their employees. That's typical MBA corporate strategy. There was a joke going around years ago for uh, suppliers of products at Walmart. And Walmart would give out, I don't know if they still do, they probably do, but Walmart would give out a supplier of the year award. And the joke amongst all the companies that sold products at Walmart was the name of the award for winning supplier of the year at Walmart three years in a row was called bankruptcy. Because to win that award, you had to basically give Walmart the most, you know, cutting your own throat price on your own products. That was how you won. That's how you win with Wall Street. Wall Street is mass legalized gambling on the perceived value of companies. And one of the things in their playbook is 
maximum profit uh, for people who don't actually do anything at the company and just trade shares all day. <clears throat> they would prefer as much profit as possible with as little expenditure as possible. Wall Street's dream, whether they want to admit it or not, is to have a guy like Chris Cox sitting alone in a big skyscraper with $200 billion in profit and no employees. And then they'd be like, look how efficient that company is. And it's like, right, but a company that's made up like that doesn't make anything anymore. It's just a failed bank account. It's just a big bank account with, you know, but that's, that's the danger because when you play to Wall Street, eventually your company is going to get in this bind where it's like, well, we've got to satisfy the shareholders. So the first thing we're going to do is start getting rid of our people. Well, when we get rid of our people, suddenly we don't have enough people to make the products. We already have a distribution and volume problem with the products we do make. That's going to make that worse. We'll pass the price hikes onto the consumer because now everything's going to go up again because they can, because this is all about maximizing profit. We're going to cut 60 million, even though we made half a billion on Marvel Legends alone, we're going to cut 60 million in salaries. We're going to shuffle the deck a little bit. We're going to raise the prices a little more and that'll please Wall Street and it'll enrich all of us at the sea level, the executive suite. Customers, whatever, but put some flowery language in there that sounds human. It'll be great. The saddest part about all this is that meanwhile, while all this is going on, and again, no sympathy to the, the front facing people that think social media posts like this are really going to get somebody excited about a brand like Indiana Jones. Yeah, you should be, you guys who came up with that, you should be first on the list to get gone. <sighs> Even if they weren't cutting salaries, you guys should get gone for that. Good Lord. You don't look like toy collectors. You don't look like you can, you look like more people in skin suits trying to relate to human beings. How do we relate to humans? Put on shirt with brand on it. Take photo. Like, damn guys. Damn. So then you got Has uh, Mattel following in Hasbro's footsteps too late. Because I'm sure you saw Mattel Creations crowdfunding arm their HasLab has decided that they're launching a $550 before shipping. It's going to be 600 bucks, they say, shipped. And that's just a surcharge, probably going to be more like $700 shipped within the United States and other territories. Uh, Eternia playset. The Eternia playset from Masters of the Universe from back in the day. They're doing one for the Origins line. I mean, my opinion about Eternia as a playset, whether you're talking vintage or origins, because it's virtually identical, um, is a moot point. That's just subjective. I do think it's a silly cocaine fueled fever dream of a playset that does not reflect anything in Masters of the Universe. It's, I've called it many times over the years, Six Flags over Eternia. It, it, I mean, look at it. It's like opposing monorails and Skeletor and He-Man can fight in the air like in Highlander 2. Like it's, it's ridiculous. But that's, that's just my opinion on the toy itself. If you love it, great. But are you really going to pay $550 plus shipping for one? Are you really going to, after everything that we've seen with the Ghost Rider car and everything people are finally waking up to with the HasLab thing to the point that even the biggest influencers are having to run for the hills and, and try and, and try and make peace with their audiences on this. I mean, are you, are you really going to sit there after this, seeing the mistake of, of, you know, corporate industry crowdfunding, especially, you know, toy industry crowdfunding, big corporate corporations, crowdfunding this stuff. Are you really going to turn around and get distracted by, oh, but this is Eternia and it's a different company. And then do it again. Is that what's going to happen? Because right now these figures have only modestly gone up in price because of COVID, but they've backed off of doing the stuff that Hasbro's done with the multiple price hikes. 
Mattel never put out a press release saying, because of the Russians, we're going to have to raise the price on, on Origins figures again, which was one of the tackiest press releases I've ever read. Um, that was late last year, early this year, something like that, whenever the whole Ukraine invasion started. So are you guys really going to make that mistake with this HasLab? And run to it and be like, oh, and then give them their 5,000 backers on a super inflated price that then teaches them that they can upcharge everything in their Origins portfolio. And they will. If, if, if this succeeds, that will happen. I have supported the Origins lines insofar as they are not crowdfunded items and it's and it's something that I want. So... You know, for example, I did not want duplicate or whatever that was. Um, I tend to just grab the stuff that was from the original line, just remade. And I have picked up a few, you know, Mattel Creations pre-orders and things like that, but they were pre-orders. They were not exclusives or anything like that. It's insofar as, you know, they were impossible to get and the prices were gouged and they were crowdfunded. Um, but I've kept up by and large. I would probably have no interest in Eternia. I've never had interest in it as a vintage collectible, but I will admit that if it had come out at retail, I would have bought one to have as part of my Origins collection. I will not be buying one because it's a crowdfund. But if you do the maths on it, um, the original Castle Grayskull was $20. The original Eternia was $90. From 20 to 90, according to my maths, that is a 350% add-on. Okay. This Castle Grey Skull, the Origins one, was $80. And at the time it came out, it was a proof point to everybody looking at Hasbro, refusing to do play sets and making super expensive vehicles and going, how come Mattel can do this in the action figure market right now, Hasbro, and you're gouging all of us? From $80, if you add on 350%, you get $360. Now, barring extra shipping, since you're not picking it up in a store like we did in the 80s, and maybe barring some particular elements of it where materials have gone up, 400, 425 at a stretch. But the maths... 360 bucks for Eternia. They are, they are pulling a page out of the Hasbro HasLab playbook too late because the optics are already starting to be really bad for these crowdfunded projects right as they're trying to get in hard on the game with Eternia. I mean, they already tried it with a $250 wrestling ring. I don't follow wrestling. I don't know if that's sold or not, but really? $250 for a wrestling ring? Give me a break. So this, this is not advisable. And I, I can't believe that we're going to walk away from this Ghost Rider thing after the Rancor and after all the debate about the His Tank, which did fund. But a lot of people are like, yeah, I got it because I'm a G.I. Joe fan, but... I know that I paid into something that was too expensive. Like they've, they've been saying it. It's not me saying it, they're saying it. Are we really gonna turn around and get distracted by Six Flags over Eternia at that price? Are we? Are we gonna make the same mistake again? Are you guys gonna learn? I, I, All of these influencers who have been chummy with these companies for so long, they're already bailing on the HasLab over here. If any of them turn around and start hyping this Eternia, take notes, copious notes on that. Because it's disingenuous as hell. They sit around in their secret lounges and their little live streams and they talk about this stuff and they don't give credit to smaller channels for things like the Bratz vehicle 
which three POA podcasts was were the ones that f- found that as a as a uh, comparative to show how badly Hasbro was gouging people on the Ghost Rider car. They don't give credit to anybody. And they sit in their little secret squirrel, secret lounge live streams and stuff, and they tell the truth behind closed doors, but they don't they don't forward face that out to you guys. And then they let the honest channels, whether they're Retro Blasting or Articulated Ninja or whoever else, they let all of them twist in the wind, trying to tell the truth, while they spin all you guys up to make you believe that, oh, it's not like that. But now, with these guys starting to abandon this HasLab, I think you should start putting the dots together. Connect the dots, people. Corporate toy crowdfunding from the two biggest toy companies in the world shouldn't exist. Do not buy into these. Do not reward these companies for this. Walk away. I don't know how much more clear I can make that that message. Are you really that desperate for a Dodge Charger that's not really a Dodge Charger and Six Flags over Eternia that doesn't look anything like the actual city in the cartoon? Are you really that desperate that you will pay over half to close to three quarters of a grand to get it? Please tell me you're not that stupid. Because if you show Mattel that you are, they're going to start charging stupid prices for this stuff. I really hope the tide is turning based on everything I've seen coming out of the Hell Charger and especially with some of the big, the big dogs backing off of it. They're backing off of it for the wrong reasons, but they're backing off of it. Um, saving their own bacon. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, but yeah, um, I'll be very interested to see what happens on October 12th when that stupid, that stupid Eternia thing goes online. Because right now, if, if any of those same channels that are backing out of this HasLab are hyping this, I'm not kidding. Like, you should, you should, you should be angry. You should be really angry about that. Because that is so disingenuous. Do not let them Pied Piper you off a cliff. All right, guys, I got to get back to Star Wars Follies. I'm working hard on that. The next big Star Wars Follies is coming. And um, it's going to be a good one. Uh, I can't wait to show it to everyone. So I'm going to get back to work. But um, we will uh, talk about this again, I have a feeling. So... I'll see you on the next video.